Good morning everyone. This is Dan with Sydney's Angels and today I want to show you my new rack I just built and my new fry system I just built copied from Master Breeder Dean. Stay tuned. Alright so this is a unique area of the basement. You come down the stairs. Please excuse the mess. It's I really got to get this cleaned up. But you come down the stairs and the basement basically splits. This is the smaller side and there's actually a crawl space behind this wall. This is like a maybe a 10 by 10 area. It's not a small area. I know a lot of people have fish rooms that are much smaller than this. But this is not my forever area. I'm going to be moving everything in about a year and a half when my second kiddo gets a little older into that wood shop. And I, it's a mess right now so I don't want to show you guys yet. But basically, this wood shop is walled off. It goes from this exterior wall all the way down to this exterior wall. And it is going to be my new fish room. I can't wait to get that built. So since I don't have the time or money to build that right now, I've got to make use of the space I do have. And that means getting creative and building racks um, to custom sizes. HVAC is right behind it, so I didn't want to go... I didn't want to go this way anymore and then the water heater is to the left of it so I couldn't really go this way anymore and by the way um, super grateful thank you guys everyone that has subscribed really you don't know how much I appreciate that um, I just did a 600 subscriber giveaway and I said oh we'll do one at a thousand <laughs> I didn't think it'd be this quick so Please excuse me, I've, I've got to come up with some more gift ideas and we're going to do another giveaway. Thank you guys so much for your support, it really means the world to me. This rack is was free to build. And I know uh, Roland, you were asking about what's the cheapest rack you can make. It's got to be the 2x4 rack. And I know wood costs varies, but I got all this wood for free. There's always people getting rid of wood for free. Uh, my sister-in-law was getting rid of it. She used to use it for pitching lessons I think, that's why it's painted green. And if you're interested in how I built this, I didn't have time to film how I built this because I did this in two naps when Sydney was sleeping. So I didn't have time to set up the tripod or do anything like that. I basically just found King of DIY's uh, How to Build a Rack video, one of his older videos, which is a really good one. And it's very simple. Basically, in a nutshell, and I'll link that video in this video so you can go check it out. You make a frame that's the size you need for your tanks front to back if that's the way you're setting them up. I left half an inch um, wiggle room on both sides. So you can see I have half an inch, I have over half an inch back here now. Cause I could technically push this back, although I like the way it looks when it's flush like this. So I just have it flush. You figure out how many levels you wanna do. In this case I did three. And you figure out how much space you need in between the tanks. My rule of thumb is eight inches. So you get eight inches in between these tanks. That way when you're in here with nets you're not bumping your head or your your hand on this stuff and you actually got room underneath the tanks to mount lighting and other uh, equipment not to mention when you build a rack out of wood you can screw hooks to it I could start um, hanging my nets like this is all coming down eventually so I'm gonna be moving a lot of my hardware over here and when I move into the new fish room, which I'm so excited to do that, it's going to be like a gallery slash breeding area. So all of this stuff will be painted black. It's gonna look really sharp. There's gonna be couches in there. I'm gonna have my computer in there so I can you know, maybe someday stream from there. And uh, I've got a lot of big plans. It's gonna be insulated. The whole room's gonna be heated. It's gonna be like a lounge where you know people can come chill look at all the different tanks there's going to be display planted tanks and there's also going to be some breeding tanks but it's all going to look really nice so i can't wait to get that started i know steve's going to help me with that i just really it's time and money right now like everything else in life don't have enough of either so i'm making do with the space i got if you're even relatively handy all you really need is a drill and a saw a chop saw and you're good you could even use a circular saw, but I'd, I'd recommend some kind of chop saw. Before we talk about Master Breeder Dean's fry system, which is super awesome, I can't wait to show you that. Let's go through these tanks real quick and show you what I got going on. So, this first tank is the Blair Eye Rainbow Fish. 
that I've been breeding out. Even I noticed that the trio, the one male, two females works, but the, the male is constantly harassing the females. I think we need another male in here at least so that they can kind of spar and do their thing and, and they give them a break. But they have given me tons of babies already. Actually, the next tank over is all their babies. And I know I've showed you this before. These are all Blair Eye rainbow fish. And I already told Steve, you take as many as you want from here and put them in your 220 and then I'll sell you guys whatever I got left. So these will be on my website when they reach about an inch. And I don't know how I'm gonna sell them yet. I gotta figure that out. I might sell them as trios. I might sell them as like groups of six, unsexed. The thing with these genetics, all these fish that I've been getting from Steve come from legit sources. So their genetics are extremely, extremely good. And they're showing colors at a very early age. So we might be able to tell male, female pretty early on. Third tank I just set up last night. If you guys remember in some of my other videos, this little tote there, I put six blue dream shrimp in there about four or five months ago. And I've just been chucking food in there every every day and really haven't paid attention to it much. And there is a there's hundreds of shrimp in there now because there's nothing to predate on them. So I pulled some of the nicest blue dream shrimps out of there. And I think I'm gonna start line breeding shrimp just to have something else to offer on the website. It's a pretty simple setup. I just got white sand, uh, a cycled sponge filter, a bunch of Java moss or Christmas moss on a piece of wood. We can actually put these guys in here now if you guys want. See all those eggs? We don't have to get too into it right now, but the way that I acclimate shrimp is I actually, like a lot of people, I drip acclimate, but I'll do it overnight. So I'll start it when I go to bed and I'll just let it go for like eight hours. And the nice thing about these dipping pours, which I can link some in, in the description in case you uh, are interested in checking them out, Lee's makes these. The dipping pours hang on the inside or the outside of the, the glass and the water line cannot go above the water line in the tank. So you'll never overflow this if you start a siphon. So I start a simple siphon out with airline tubing and a, and a valve, clamp it onto this one, and just let it drip really slow all night. And you can see the water line stopped at the water line of the tank. So these guys are nice and acclimated. We're gonna put them in now. And you might be wondering why I'm using a 10 gallon tank for these shrimp uh, when I already had a tote set up. Well, two reasons. One, I wasn't really enjoying them in the tote because uh, I re could, really couldn't see them and I want to be able to see them. And two, now I can select the best shrimp and um, cull out the ones that aren't deep blue so that I'm supplying the best shrimp I can for you guys. So with these shrimp they at least my experience and i got very limited shrimp experience so i'm not an expert so don't take anything i say too seriously i've just noticed they've been throwing a lot of like off colors when they breed at least in that tank they've got a lot of clear ones which are still cool you know but i want the dark blue i want the blue dream so really excited to have these in here now where i can really watch them grow up i can power feed them and uh, get a better idea of how many I have so that I can start selling them to you guys. We'll talk about the fry system in a second. This is a absolute ton of Bosmani rainbow fish, the same ones I have in the 90 gallon upstairs. Rosario Lacourt strain. He line bred these to get the deepest orange and deepest dark blue that he could. Very, very good genetics. And I'll be posting these on the website because gonna have a ton of them. Probably gonna fill up a 75 gallon just with these. So I dropped another mop from the Bosmane in here last night <laughs> and you can see I already have a ton of fry. It's been like eight hours. So these guys are just throwing tons of eggs. They're super fertile. This third tank is empty down here. All right and then I'm sure most of you guys want to see this. This is pretty cool. Aquarium Co-op's beloved master breeder Dean came up with this idea and it is a genius idea and I've been wanting to build it ever since I saw it but I screwed up a little bit and we'll talk about how I think I screwed up and how I'm gonna fix it 
of course the furnace kicks on right away I don't have time to wait for it to turn off I'm sorry guys you just have to deal with it so this is a 20 gallon long got a heater inside the the bottom portion of the tank it's set at 82 degrees got a cycled sponge filter down here you could do a uh, canister filter hang on back whatever you want as long as you got some kind of biological filtration and I've got a prehistoric power head that my dad gave me powering the whole operation so the general idea is you're giving these fry in these trays 20 gallon volume of water whereas you know you might only if you're if you're breeding lots of different fry you might only have a three gallon tank a five gallon tank it's harder to keep the quality of water good in there but with this you got 20 gallons of water it's super easy to drop a hose in there every night do 50 percent water change and keeping these guys really happy so just real quick these are Bosmane, these are the Blair Eye, and these are some CPD. This is empty, I'm gonna put some stuff in here soon. So, the way it works is, water gets pumped up through this tube into, it goes into this back half inch PVC. Which I have uh, capped off, and basically, that's supplying water to every tank. And I've got valves on there that I can control the water flow if I want to turn it up. Or if I want to like shut it all the way off, I can. So I got those valves. Just standard valves from Gemco. I don't think these are waterproof, but I haven't noticed any leaking yet actually. So I got them Teflon taped in there. The second PVC is um, my air supply, which I have. The first air inlet is coming from my loop system up there. So I got a bunch of air coming in here. And then um, above every tray is another valve. And I just have these connected to this air stone. And that's kind of just breaking the surface tension, giving them a little more oxygen. It's nice because if I put fry, fry powder in there, it'll it'll kind of sink down. You could also run it this way without the Zis Air Stones. Just a, you know, aquarium co-op tubing, air, air tubing, which I love this stuff. It's so soft and amazing. Yeah, so, you know, when the, when the fryer's still hatching out, I'll have this really, really low. I'll be like, you know, I'll have it like this. Let's see. Uh, like that. But then you want to go full full blast. Look at, I mean, you could, <laughs> you could really, like, get a little carried away with that. Because I have so much air now. So we'll just give them a little bit of air. It still seems like too much. Anyway. There we go. And I really like this, this system. And if you're interested in how to build these trays, if you become a member at the Aquarium Co-op channel, which I did for like one month and then I canceled it because I just wanted to watch these, it's very simple. I found these at Meijer. If I can find all this stuff, I'll post it in the description so you guys can pick it up because that doesn't need to be a big secret. And basically all it really is, it's like one of those fridge organizers, spray painted, the bottom of the outside white so you can see I spray painted that white uh, there is a hole dremeled out in the back that lets water flow out with a sponge so that fry can't get out but apparently I have some fry getting out anyway look at those guys and they, they've been just loving it down there so I'll scoop them out eventually, but they're still getting food and they seem fine. So <laughs> I gotta, but once I'm once I'm done with this batch of fry, I gotta fix these sponges. The whole way that it's set up is there's just some stainless steel uh, machine screws with a locking nylon nut. And then if you really wanna get crazy for extra bonus points, you can put some shrink wrap on it. Not necessary, but Dean did it and I thought it looked cool, so I did it too, because I wanted to be cool. Um, really cool system like really really cool system really enjoy it but I screwed up 
I got eight inches above it, like every other tank, but I put the the dang PVC right above the trays, so it, it really limits my ability to get in here and clean. I know what you're thinking, Dan, why don't you just put them up here? Well, I could totally do that. And it's an option, I might do that. But the problem is, I still can't really get in here to clean them really well. I mean, obviously, I've been keeping them pretty clean, but ideally, I'd like to be able to like stand over it and, and see exactly what I'm doing so I'm not sucking up fry with my siphon. And with this, I can't really get my big head underneath there. I mean, I guess I could, let's try. No, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> so, I'm gonna be making a stand just for this. And I'm gonna, I'm really short, so I'm gonna keep it waist high so I can walk straight up to it and work on it and keep it really clean without it being a headache because Guys, I haven't been in this hobby very long, but I do know one thing. If you don't make maintenance easy, you're not gonna do it. On those days where you had a long shift, you're tired, you don't feel like doing your maintenance, and on top of all that, it's a big pain in the butt because you didn't set it up right, you're not gonna do it. And um, your fish are gonna suffer, you're, you're gonna be bummed that you didn't follow through with your maintenance. So, I need to make this easy for me, and right now, it's kind of a pain in the butt. So what I'm thinking, I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put three more 10 gallons here maybe some shrimp something like that and uh, I'm gonna build a another 2x4 rack down here just to house this uh, fry system and I can you know I can tap into the the loop system up here and uh, I have all the air I need I've got power over there so it'll just be as simple as moving this shrimp tank, which we, we still gotta get this set up, guys. I haven't forgotten about it. If you're still here watching this video, I kinda wanna share my future plans with you. This little corner right here is kinda useless. I just have extra like containers down there right now. I think I'm gonna move this hexagon over there. And we're finally gonna set up the um, Skittles shrimp tank in the next couple weeks. So I'm really excited to get that video out. That's gonna come over here. Cause I just really know there's no purpose over here. It's kind of just blah. Slop sink location's in a good spot. My new um, setup for the automatic water system is looking good. I do plan on taking my Zis brine trip hatchery and hanging it over here. I wish I would've given myself a little more room. I wish this was a little higher up, but it's all PVC glued now, so I gotta work around it. But I think it'd be so much easier to have the Zis hatchery sitting here because then when I'm done I can throw it in the sink wash it set it right back up instead of having to walk across the fish room and spill brine everywhere um, DIY videos that are coming up you guys can look forward to I figured out a way to siphon water really really fast out of my aquariums to save time and again not an original idea I've just adapted it to be my rendition three quarter inch PVC siphon with a strainer and a pre-filter sponge on it. I can siphon out, I can do a 50% water change on the 40 gallon in like four minutes. It's crazy how fast it is. I take this three quarter inch vinyl tubing and it just slides right into there and I'm ready to go to town. So that's a little DIY video that I'll make with you guys if you're interested in making your own siphons. Because I have other siphons that I've used in the past um, that I kind of made myself. And another simple but really effective DIY video I'm going to be shooting very soon is the false bottom for egg scattering fish. So if you guys follow me, you know that I like to breed egg scattering fish. Um, I'm learning, you know, I haven't done tetras or anything like that yet, but I think this is going to really help with that. Basically all it is is egg crate or light diffuser and plastic canvas cut to the exact dimensions of a five gallon tank. And that's how I was able to breed all these guys uh, relatively easily. So if you're interested in that video, that'll be coming out soon. I like doing DIY stuff, I think it's fun. This is a really cool one because you can, you can customize this to any size tank you want. And if you have fish that aren't necessarily attracted to plants, 
They'll drop their eggs everywhere and you'll catch them everywhere. So I actually mounted the brine shrimp hatchery right next to the sink like I said I was going to. Uh, the same day I'm shooting this video so I figured I'd throw it in the video. And honestly, it's just made out of scrap wood that I uh, drilled into the concrete with Tapcom screws. And like this is an old tread from the stairs that we just redid. And just, you know, one buys. Not, nothing crazy, but definitely going to be a huge upgrade having it here. And uh, another huge upgrade is running the airline in through the... Uh, the downspout get a much better circulation going and another thing I really like about the setup is I've got a little connector here so I can disconnect it at this point and drain it into my container something else I've been experimenting with that's kind of interesting is keeping brine shrimp alive longer so in here I just have some oxygen going when I hold these brine this morning I rinsed them to get all the uh, eggs out I filled this up with clean dechlorinated tap water and I threw a couple tablespoons of salt in there and uh, they've been really happy in here so I think you, know, you can see they're still doing really well they got their salt water so now I've got like this supply of brine and yeah they're gonna be getting bigger with time and I don't know how long they're gonna survive in here but I feel like when I throw them in the fridge they just kind of die really easily at least this line does um, aquarium co-op line seem to do better in the fridge brine shrimp direct is a lot cheaper and you get a lot more bang for your buck but I've just noticed there's there is definitely some differences in this brine so I'm slowly learning as I go what I can do with it Look how happy all this brine shrimp still is, though. If I threw this in the fridge with its original water, they'd be they they'd be dead by now. So yeah, fresh dechlorinated tap water, about two liters of it in my box. If you haven't watched this video, I make a DIY. I make a DIY breeder box out of these really useful boxes, and they work out really nice. But yeah, just a little bit of oxygen going in there. And they've been doing great. I'm going to leave them overnight, see how they do. But it's kind of nice to just have brine shrimp whenever you need it, you know, on the counter. It doesn't smell at all. And like I said, they, they seem to be doing really well. So yeah, when I'm ready to use it, I just take my little turkey baster, suck up what I need. See, there are tons of little baby brine in there. And I could uh, rinse it off. I'd rinse the salt off if I want. I like to do that with my planted tanks just because I know the plants don't like the salt. But this isn't super necessary, you don't have to do this. And rinse it. Might as well just use the osmosis wastewater. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this quick video and Again, I really appreciate the subscriptions. I really appreciate the support. You guys are awesome. And you can expect a lot more videos from me. So thank you. Have a safe week. We'll talk to you next week.